pretty. Say right, anonymous here. Wanted to do a video on a much requested um, topic, just to give a little bit of lip service to it as we go in there, because it's going to be probably going to be a little bit before I get to any type of videos or anything like that. But maybe some of the other headmasters or knights will uh, come up with something there. And that topic is Jarkai. So double sabers. Um, lots of requests for that on the YouTube page, on Facebook, on personal messages, all of that kind of thing. Everybody wants to know how to do two sabers. And it's a very common thing. I hear it a lot. Um, oh, I just tried uh, doing uh, Jarkai with uh, such and such a form and worked this way or that way. And um, if you are on the Learners in Exile forum, you'll know one of our <laughs> stock and trade answers to the uh, to the uh, question of advice for Jarkai is generally uh, get good with one weapon uh, before trying to get good with two. And even before getting good with two, get good with your offhand, with your non-dominant hand, because that's a little tricky. But <clears throat> we will forego all of that and just kind of give a little uh, primer on it or a uh, introduction to it. So there's, I think, a lot of misconceptions about using two sabers. Um, lightsabers will have some inherent uh, weaknesses as far as being used with uh, one in both hands. Uh, and the major one of that is the lack of guard. Um, the Chinese arsenal has uh, quite a number of paired weapons, and most of these weapons are designed to be paired. Um, and I think this is, might be why there is more double weapon type of stuff found in the Chinese type of arts, some you know Asian, you know continental type of arts, um, Thai, Indonesian, all of that kind of thing, uh, than is found in European arts or. Japanese or, or anything like that, um, even though it is found in both, because um, it's it's really found everywhere. But <clears throat> I'll pick up a couple here. Um, <clears throat> these are uh, tiger hooks. Now these are pretty famous. Um, they're kind of mysterious. We don't have a whole lot of information, historical information on these weapons. They appear to be improvised weapons from the head of a halberd. Um, so that's interesting to note. Um, now there are other more famous weapons, uh, paired weapons in uh, the Chinese arsenal. Uh, probably the most famous is the uh, Wing Chun butterfly swords. Um, they also can, I don't have any so I can't bring them out, but um, they also have the same kind of characteristics. And one of these characteristics um, of the paired weapons is they often have a guard, a hand guard, guarding the, the, the wielding hand here. Um, in the case of here, it's obvious. We're holding it right here. This is acting as a parrying surface and at times a attacking surface, but most of the time we've got this over here and this over here um, to interact with. Um, this is very protective. Uh, the S-shaped guard that is found in uh, certain, uh, like the non-dial, which is, tends to be shorter and tends to be used in pairs. That's very similar to the butterfly sword um, <clears throat> with that same type of hand guard. And I think it's probably pretty obvious why that is, because you're probably going to be moving your hand into the danger position much more than you would be if you, you know, had one hand free or you could keep it out like that. Um, the other type I have right here are these, which are um, called deer horn knives or sun and moon knives. It depends on what you know what, what system you're talking about. But they're essential they're essentially um, very, very short and very, very sharp bucklers because 
they're kind of meant to be used right here out at the edge of the fist. So they're protecting the guard there, but they're very protective and you can use them simply as a parrying tool. And that's one of those characteristics of Jarakai um, or any type of double in a weapon up is you're going to be parrying with one weapon, attacking with the other one in any ideal situation. Um, how you get to those points, that takes a little finagling, but we'll talk about that. Um, so now these are used um, primarily, or most effectively, I should say, against uh, longer weapons, where you will be parrying in and attacking at the hands of the person wielding it, and then you can kind of trap that weapon, take it out of their hands, use that, use the leverage. But this brings up another good characteristic of double weapons, and that is they are short. Um, they're little, because when you have two of them in hand, you want to be able to maneuver them around quickly, <clears throat> because otherwise it becomes difficult. So now these are probably the limit of the length that one would want for a double weapon. Um, now you could have one longer weapon, as long as one is shorter, right? But if they are the same size, at least in Chinese speak, um, they want to be about this length no longer. And again, that's to make wielding something less of a chore. Right, as, as you go around. Um, <clears throat> now, when using them, obviously, we kind of attack simultaneously, all of that. And we do the forms and all that kind of thing, trying to coordinate both weapons, because that's kind of tricky. So, not easy things to use. Um, often, double weapons are specialized weapons. Now there's other ones, double mallets, doubles just regular sabers, double dien, or straight swords, all of that. Most of those are, well the mallets probably come from India, I don't know too much about those, they're not that common. Um, <clears throat> but uh, like the double dao and double jian forms, the dao forms with short sabers, done, you know, in that way, yes, that's probably been done for, for, for quite a while. The, gen, the double gen forms, I want to say, are a little bit more performance-based, um, just because you can see from the performances that while they are displaying unbelievable coordination and uh, prowess with the wielding of those weapons, it doesn't look too... Um, well, it doesn't look too practical in the fact that you're not necessarily producing a whole lot of force or getting the weapon to move in its most efficient way. Um, <clears throat> so there's more emphasis on body and look in, in that kind of respect. Um, <clears throat> so those are two things to keep in mind. Um, so when, generally speaking, when I want to do two lightsabers, <clears throat> which I must confess is not often. Um, I will go for two shorter ones. Um, doing two longer ones, um, it's very easy, I should say, if I was using one saber to tangle two long sabers up, right? Um, it's more difficult if you have one shorter, uh, sh shorter uh, saber. Having two shorter sabers does require you to get in quicker, deeper, to get the hits and all that, but hopefully you can move this around. Now, again, you're dealing with a couple of, well, limitations. You have no protection to your hands, so your hands are, are sitting ducks, okay? Even if you try to block something here, it's probably just going to come back and hit you there. Um, so that's difficult. Um, <clears throat> Since you want to go a little bit shorter, you're probably going to be giving up a little bit of reach um, and all of that. Again, we're trying to do things simultaneously. 
but that can be more difficult than it sounds because the other person is not going to be cooperative to exactly what you want to do. So um, <clears throat> those are more kind of things to think about as you uh, kind of start picking these up. Now, to exercise with them as a means of coordination is actually a very good thing to do. Um, so simply exercising with them, trying to get, if I can get both of my orbits to kind of know fig figure out all of all of this kind of stuff so that when I go there and I move them they move together I can coordinate both sides of my body um, <clears throat> even being able to do it with two with two sabers will kind of make you a little bit more aware of your offhand so you'll probably hopefully get a little less dangly So uh, that would be uh, my advice as far as training with them. Training with them can be rewarding. Um, generally speaking, though, keep it real basic. Right? Don't be trying to worry about doing the specific combos and, and all of that. That will come later. Get really good. And again, we're going to focus on getting one arm, one hand, one saber under control before bringing in the other one. And before we bring both of them together, we're going to get the same control and the same responsiveness with the other hand, as, as much as we can get, right? Because it's always going to be a little bit deficient in your non-dominant hand. At that point, you can then bring them together into one thing. Um, what forms do they go with? Well, the way we look at it is they pretty much go with any form. It's just a matter of bringing them uh, into the uh, formulas of flavor. Um, so she chose is going to be very direct, all of that. You're probably going to get lots of parries <clears throat> that come into chops. Same thing going up. Um, <clears throat> basic, this way and that way. One thing you're not going to see in any form is, is, is the X block. That doesn't really occur very much. Um, <clears throat> you may see movements like that which will go through that X block, but it's not. we don't ever want to really block anything like that. Um, so I feel like this is getting a little rambly, so I'm going to cut it off. Um, I'll do another video soon. Uh, bringing up some maybe uh, specific strategies that are really good with two sabers um, and maybe some specific strategies which are good against two sabers um, to try to capitalize on a little bit of the split of attention uh, that is created with two weapons especially two weapons that have glowing blades all right so there we go just a little bit of a preview of what we're going to be doing I will leave you here. Have a great day and happy savoring.